Hey guys, my name is Jake. Welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge. And it's Fixed Blade Friday. We're taking a look at this knife today. This is another sword knife. I have not done a sword review for a while and I'm happy that I got this guy. This guy is the Amerikiwi. Uh, it's a Skinner knife, full tang. Uh, don't let the purple handle turn, turn you off. This comes in 12 different handle colors. I got mine from Sword Canada. They've got nine colors options uh, at their store. And, uh, but if you want even more colors, you know, if you're in the United States, you're lucky. Uh, Amazon.com has, you know, 12 different colors. And uh, if you're in New Zealand, you've got all the choices as well because New Zealand is where these knives are made. Uh, they are uh, handmade, hand sharpened. Uh, I'm sure the plastic is made at, on a machine though. <laughs> Anyhow, these knives are not terribly expensive. Uh, they are in the budget range and uh, they are available for you guys. We want to look at this today, so stick around. The review is coming at you right now. First, let's talk about the uh, sheath system here. This is a triple layer PVC with a, a fabric backing. Uh, this is you know, the same kind of fabric that they make uh, fire hoses out of, uh, maybe even the whole thing, who knows? <laughs> this is really, really dense stuff. I've had uh, one of Svord's sheaths like this in the past, and this is very, very durable. Comes with this extra loop back here that you can use for you know, a bunch of different kinds of things, uh, a ferro rod, uh, a system where you've got some kind of tools or something, uh, whatever you can fit in there, you can fit in there. We've got a belt loop here and uh, you just feed the uh, belt through there and it works just fine. I've got just a little bit of a video about that. And uh, this is how a standard belt is fed through there. And that's how it hangs on a pair of pants, you know, through your belt line. And that gives you a rough idea of how it's going to look. So there you go. That's how you use the sheath. The uh, rivets here are very strong and it's got a nice snap here that holds it closed. So, you know, if you are out in the elements, you know, that keeps most of the weather out of it. Of course, it's not totally uh, weatherproof. And it even says uh, the S on here, the Sword logo uh, right there and the snap is you know quite good. I actually like the sheath. You know perhaps leather would be a really good touch. Maybe Kydex. You can maybe get those things done on your own. Uh, but this sheath is totally functional and that's what this knife design is about. This is about function first and uh, how good it looks later on. Um, Except for they did that one uh, nod to all the different colors so that you've got your, you know, that's one thing that's not just function about this knife, all the different colors. You've got uh, these brass pins that hold it together. And uh, I'll show you a little bit of a video of me with taking the handle off. And uh, here's how it looks with the handle taken off. So if you don't like these handles and you know a little bit about how to put handles on knives, you know, it's very easily done to, uh, you know, put your own handle on this knife. No problem. You can even reuse uh, the uh, fixtures for putting it together if you want. So there you go. It's just solid tang all the way back and, uh, you know, well, well built. It's a solid knife. Uh, the grip's good on it. There's a bit of a texture on here. Uh, even if it gets wet, you know, it still has a good grip. And we've got this, uh, you know, Upswept design with a point here. This is definitely designed as a Skinner knife, uh, but of course, a good cutting edge, especially with a lot of belly, is very useful for a lot of different kinds of tasks. It's a well made fixed blade knife. The steel that they used in here is 15N20, uh, also known as L6, which is a very tough, uh, quite wear resistant uh, steel uh, stays sharp for quite a while not too hard to resharpen again 
rock wall hardness range on this can be very, very wide. Uh, everything from, you know, the low 50s, like 53, all the way up to 64. And uh, generally, it's in the low 60s. 60, 60, 61 is generally what L6 is uh, hardened to. This is one of the main steels that is used in Damascus uh, because of how it etches. So this and very often carbon 1095 uh, those two steels, this one and the 1095, are used in Damascus steel, and Damascus can be a very durable steel as well, although 1095 is a little softer than the uh, 15N20. So that's the steel um, and the sheath, polypropylene. I've talked about all the parts on it, uh, the, the materials used. Uh, let's go over the uh, dimensions and that kind of information on here. The cutting edge is eight and a half centimeters, 3.35 inches. A blade length tip to the handle, 8.63 centimeters, 3.4 inches. The blade thickness, two and a quarter millimeters, which is 0 0.0885 inches. So a little bit under an eighth of an inch. Um, the blade depth, and I measured it right here where the thumb rest changes to the uh, up sweep here, 2.6 centimeters. 1.02 inches. The thickness of the edge behind this convex grind is uh, about a millimeter, 0 0.0395 inches. And I don't have grind angles for you because it is a convex grind, which is a rounded over grind. Uh, instead of a V grind, like a flat V, it's sort of round coming down to the edge. But the edge, you know, is sharp. The uh, handle length, 10.63 centimeters. Uh, 4.18 inches, the handle thickness, 1.55 centimeters, 0.61 of an inch. The handle depth this way is 1.89 centimeters, that's 0.742 of an inch. Uh, the grip area, so between my thumbs, uh, 9.14 centimeters, 3.6 inches. The total length of this knife is 19 and a quarter centimeters, which is 7.58 inches. So that's the main specs of the weight. The weight is 78 grams, uh, two and three quarter ounces. Uh, with the sheath, it's 189 grams, 6.65 ounces. Now the factory edge, I measured that on my equipment and I was very surprised at the outcome that I got because I, I do that. One of the first things I do is I measure how sharp it is uh, before I do any of my testing or anything. And then I, I just write that number down and I get back to it later, 485 bess to, that's a terrible number for how dull it is. Turns out this knife had a burr on it on the edge and that's why I removed the burr and that's all I did. It took me 30 seconds to remove the burr and then it got 145 rating for the sharpness. 200 is considered sharp, smaller is even sharper. So 145 Nothing to scoff at at all at the sharpness of this, but too bad they left the burr on it and uh, that gave it a very, perf very poor performance straight out of the box. Uh, but uh, the way to find out if there's a burr on something, you take your nail and you push it across an edge and if it catches, you've got a burr right there. And so it had a nasty burr that I took off and it was totally fine. How much does this knife cost? Uh, Sword Canada, swordknives.ca, $74.99 Canadian. Amazon.com has it for the Americans, uh, $33.93 US. So, you know, it is a budget knife. Knives always cost more in Canada. That's just what we deal with. Um, so that's how it goes. The uh, options on this, I already mentioned, you know, 12 different colors. Uh, Here's a snapshot of the uh, listing on Amazon. That shows you all the colors. Um, pros and cons, this knife is very comfortable in the hand. It, you know, it's got, has that curve on it. It's a good size that fits very many hands very comfortably. Uh, somebody with super large hands, like past extra large, you might find this a little small, but most of us are gonna find this knife very comfortable in the hand. Uh, it's a user knife for sure. Uh, the cutting edge performed very well. Uh, the edge retention 
stayed with me. It's still actually quite sharp. Uh, it's nice and light, like I said, in the weight. Uh, durable sheath, full tang. It's a simple knife that's done well. Uh, sword knives. Brian is the guy who started the company in New Zealand. Um, I've talked with him several times. And um, now that there's a distributor in Canada, uh, he asked me to get my get knives from him instead of directly from, from Brian in New Zealand uh, to save some money on shipping and things. But uh, Brian's a really good guy. And uh, his factory, he keeps as many steps as possible handmade. So there's a lot of handwork done on these knives. And they've got all kinds of styles. This is their budget stuff with this poly polypropylene. Uh, they've got knives with wood handles, uh, higher end, even higher end steels. This isn't a high end steel. This is sort of a mid grade kind of mid to low to mid grade kind of steel, but they've got higher grade steels and, uh, you know, several different le levels of knives. This is budget. And then they got a sort of mid grade and then they got higher end steels, as, higher end knives as well. Uh, the cons on this, well, basically, you know, that they left the burr on there. That's the one con. And that's about it. The rest is all just preferences. Like some people might prefer Kydex or leather. That's a preference. Some people would prefer a wooden handle. That's a preference. But the actual quality of everything on here, it's actually done quite well. It's simple, uh, clean lines. Um, you know, they, they stamp the knife out. Uh, the steel out, and then they do the handwork on the rest. They like keeping it rustic, like this is the surface of the steel as it comes from the steel factory, and it's actually a nice look here. And uh, function. This knife functions well. If you're looking for a good little cutter, especially if you're looking for a new skinning knife, uh, this is nothing to scoff at. It's functionally everything that you need. So there you go. Thanks for watching my video on the Sword Amera Kiwi from, uh, from Sword. Thanks for liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. And remember, guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.